Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today's scenario is sent in by Brian Torgerson. It's April 1913, and with the attentions of Russia, Austria-Hungary, Italy and the Ottoman Empire centered on the war in the Balkans, leftist Republican France has hatched a plan to strike at the trading power of the conservative, monarchical Britain. The Marine Nationale will work to scatter the power of the Royal Navy, allowing the German high seas fleet to strike a decisive blow. As captain of France's newest commerce raider, you set sail to play your part. The British Admiralty, scrambling to send ships after you, doesn't quite manage to coordinate units completely. This gives you an opportunity. Sink as many of the British light cruisers as you can in one hour. But your ship is an important asset, which is not to be treated cavalierly. Your survival as a viable combat unit is essential. At the end of an hour, you will sight the funnel smoke of approaching British reinforcements. You will withdraw rather than fight these ships too. You are to design a light cruiser of not more than 9,500 tons. Given your mission as a combat raider, long range is required. Sustainability on station is also important, so you will load increased ammunition. And what, given what's likely to come hunting you, a speed of 27 knots is also required. That's a lot of requirements for 1912. A modest torpedo armament is allowed, defined as not more than four launchers per side. The number of torpedo you should take is up to you. Now, this is going to be a tough mission, because I might have one light cruiser, but they have four, and they only have a tech advantage of five years. The enemy... Four light cruisers do have a point system attached to them. I can get 15 points for sinking the first two light cruisers. Uh, so for sinking each of these. So one is 15, two is 15, the third is 20 points, and the fourth is 30 points. So for a total of 80 points. And then I can get additional points by uh, building a ship that can do 28 knots or 29 knots and faster gives me even more points. And if I get extreme long range and or advanced radio, I can get another 10 points for a total of 100. Now, he wrote that this could be an interesting scenario for Taskmaster Tuesdays, but I'm just going to take this thing on myself. And who knows, maybe if the other guys want to try it as well, then they're welcome to, of course. This is going to be rough. Light cruisers in this day and age? Oof. Um... Look at that hull form difference. Sweet Jesus. How fast can this thing go? F oh, 50 knots? Holy shit. <laughs> I'm never going to get there. I'll tell you that right now. But <laughs> you can get up to 50 knots if you really wanted to. No, I don't think so. Uh, anyway, there are some design requirements. 27 knots minimum. Let's just set that to the minimum as right now. I do like the light cruiser shape a bit more than the semi-armored cruiser. Um, this thing does have a lot more resistance, though. That... Oh, that is a big benefit. Resistance is, as far as I've understood it, a sort of flat-out damage reduction. The more resistance your hull offers, the more likely you are to mitigate the incoming damage. Bulkheads to max. Uh, it is to be a maximum of 9,500 tons. One tick more. There we go. Speed minimum 27 knots. Range should be long. And now I need to start reducing weight as much as possible. Um, group armor. Set up a main tower. Set up a secondary tower. Best I can get is 7-inch main guns. But I could only get two. Because, sure, you can put one here, but it doesn't sit high enough. And it just wouldn't do anything. The case-made guns can only be 3 inch. So the problem lies in a very limited amount of firepower. Ha! 
Hey, if that's not <laughs> if that's not creative, I don't know what is. <laughs> no, we're not gonna do that. I think maybe I'm gonna have to go with the light cruiser hull because there might just be more room on this ship. See, that's better. You have less resistance, but you do get the trade-off of having more guns. 9,800 tons speed. Uh, make it 27. Range long, bulkheads max, turbines, group 3. Ooh, that's a big tower though. Yikes. Hmm, I wonder how many guns I can effectively fit on this ship. See, this is pretty potent. This is pretty damn potent, if it actually fires accurately. Speaking of, best I got, Stereoscopic 2 or Coincidence 3? I'll go with Coincidence. 6% gun base accuracy. Yeah, the more accurate I get, the more damage I do. We're going to go for full heavy shells. Lid I 2. Lid I 1 gives you 65% shell damage, but also gives you a 60% chance increase in flash fires. This only gives you, well, only gives you a 40% chance. I will take heavy barbettes. Hopefully, thereby reducing the chance that I'm going to get blown up. Uh, Torpedo-wise... Oh, I can get launchers. That's nice. That is very nice, in fact. I'm supposed to take an increased complement of shells. Um... You will load increased ammo. Oh, sorry, no more than 9,500 tons. Got to reduce it a bit more. Right. Speed is already 28 knots, so I'm already gaining a few more points than I actually need. Anti-flood. All of it. Let's put a funnel on this deck. 14.5% engine efficiency. 40%. 42 I'm taking down a couple of cruisers, but I consider those a huge threat. Oh, oh really? I can't fit those there. Okay, but six inch? Yes, six inch can fit. Six inch at a range of let's say seven and a half thousand meters has a fairly decent penetration power of uh, 4.5 inch. My own ship has really low amounts of armor on it. Sure, I get a decent armor quality, but I also want to increase the uh, the specs of the guns. Wait, what? How is that dropping the amount of weight that I have? It's supposed to gain 2% hull weight. Click. No, hold on. No, never mind, it is increasing. I thought it went down from 8700. That is exceptionally advanced shit, which I probably won't need. Now there are bonus points to be had, but I'm much more interested in adding torpedoes first to make sure that I can deliver, well, potentially hammer blows against their ships. And these will be 19 inch torpedoes of the fast nature. So that at 4.4 kilometers, I can drop off torpedoes which travel at 54, and thereby hopefully surprising the enemy and pushing them out of the fight. Now, AUX-2 engine. This is going to help a little bit with rudder shift time. Because I'm trying to, well, sort of duel these guys while hopefully still surviving. Turning circle 484. 414. The problem is, however, that the enemy might... Oh, that's too heavy. That the enemy might also bring torpedoes. Hydro 1. 25% <laughs> torpedo spotting. I'll take it. Advanced radar... Oh, sorry, advanced radio also gave me a bonus. Uh, let me check. If you have another 6 points. Very good. 29 hold. 29 knots, there we go. 
Although, is that worth the trade-off? Because you could argue that that displacement... I'm going to put that displacement in armor. And judging by the range that we're fighting at, it's going to be belt armor. And no, not turret armor. I don't have the displacement for that. Fix the weight offset issue. That will do. One ton. That's all I have left. One ton. Okay, propellant. Check. Heavy armor. Or sorry, heavy shells. Check. If these things hit, they're going to do a lot of damage. So I'm hoping for just hammer blows and then also using the torpedoes to do exactly the same thing at a range of 4.4. All right. Let's put this thing into the water and see how well she's going to hold up against four times the numbers. Four British light cruisers. Enemy smoke north. That's where we shall go. It's been a while since I operated in this day and age. So I think that this could make for an interesting video. Let's find the enemy. Starting range was 9,000. But with the technology that I have right now, it's entirely likely that I won't spot them until we're about five, 6,000 meters apart. If that. I hope that that 4 inch of armor is going to be... Oh, hello. Uh, maybe, yeah, 5.3. I hope that that 4.4 inches... No, 4 inches of armor is going to be enough. I don't believe it will be. I do get a decent bonus. But if they are armed with 7 inch guns, then I'm going to have a really tough time. Now they're coming in. Spread out. Two there, one here. I'm going to try and pick this guy off. I'm seeing a couple of five, potentially six inch guns. Smoke it up. Torpedoes are in range, but we're just a little too far away from the target. I want to get to about three and potentially closer than that. Yes, hit. Very nice, very nice. Fire high explosive. Because these high explosive shells do a load of damage with Lidite. Range 3-4. Identification 61%. I want to know what their stats are. I'm very interested to see what sort of bulkheads they have. And more importantly, whether they are not carry torpedoes or not. And sonar systems. Fire broke out on the light cruiser. We are looking at 87% identification. 3.2 clicks, 2.9 clicks. Torpedo tube might, in this current configuration, be in range. Well, it's definitely in range, but in the right angle to launch. 97. There. Displacement, 6,650 tons. 6 inch guns. Standard amount of bulkheads. Uh, no sonar system, white powder explosives, reduced ammo for the torpedoes. They don't... Oh, actually, no, they do carry torpedoes, but a few of them. Bow and stern. Perfect. You are clear to engage with the starboard torpedo launcher. What's my chance to pen? 53%. Okay, that's quite good. All right, dump it into the water. There we go. Hard to port. I'm going to try and turn around and also get the starboard launch... No, the port side launchers to bear. Because I'm really hoping that I can bring those things in and just quickly put the Hermione down. They have not yet spotted the torpedoes. Hermione is now at a range of 1.1 kilometers. Delhi, however, has detected the torpedoes at a range of 0.8. But will Hermione maneuver... Can she maneuver? Her turning circle is pretty dreadful. So maybe she won't have... No, nope, she's going to get hit. Maybe even by two torpedoes. She's desperately trying to turn to port, but not enough. 
One on the stern, one on the bow. That opens the ship up. And immediately starts flooding her in six compartments. I think we might find that that ship is gone. Hermione sinks due to heavy flooding. Ship sunk. Next target is going to be the Delhi. I'm trying to turn around. Get the port torpedo target, or uh, the port torpedo tubes, but the Delhi's maneuvering. Seemingly coming in for vengeance. I need to know when this thing stops maneuvering. It needs to stop turning. Oh, it launched a torpedo at me. Maximum turn to port. So far, we're firing from smoke to smoke. So neither party is doing any kind of respectable damage. There we go, we set a fire. Now, interestingly, they have done three points of damage. Most of it has been blocked. And I have done 2,900 damage, courtesy of the torpedoes. There's their torp. Delhi is still maneuvering. Let's switch target to the Latona. Latona is broadside on. Starting to get quite close. And I'm hoping that the closer I get, the more that pen chance goes up. And that I can... There we... Pfft, what the hell was that? That I can bring both of the 7-inch guns to bear. That would be great. Fourteen percent chance to hit. Yeah, on average that was two hits, but effectively that was one too far to the left and one too far to the right. Latona is maneuvering and might be trying to bring her stern tube to target me. Let's launch the torpedoes on the port side against the Philomel. She is definitely in range. Ow! Whoa, which did you destroy? You got a 6-inch gun, didn't you? Torpedoes away? Yeah, you got the port aft starboard... Port aft 6-inch. Uh, Continue chasing down the Latona. Torpedoes are away against the Philomel. Latona is quite close. Panchan's holding a 53, but ricochet chance is too high for me to fire AP. I am grateful that for once, these guys are not packing torpedo tubes on the port and starboard side. The ship is flooding. That's pretty bad news. Switch to auto selection. This is when the anti-flood's gonna come in very valuable. Because I knew that they were some point going to make a hole in this ship. And they did. The real question was, how can I make sure that it doesn't do that much damage? And that's by installing anti-flooding 3. Speaking of anti-flooding, how are you going to do when a torpedo strikes your ship? If Philomel detected and seemingly got ample warning. Oh nice, I got a decent amount of damage there. Yeah, she's safe. Latona is starting to flood. Oh, guess what she's going to try and do. There it is. Stern torpedo launched. Oh, come on. Flooding under control. Buoyancy maintaining 100%. Charge the ship down. She's still flooding. She can't maneuver very well. Which means she's going to be behaving in a predictable fashion. Nice, another 86 Accuracy increased to 26%. Latona, rudder repaired, but still seriously flooded. She's... no, she's still flooding. They do have a fairly decent amount of bulkheads. Why are they taking this much flooding? I feel like a, a Davy Jones ship, where you have the two bow batteries and you're just chasing the target down. Oh, Latona's starting to maneuver pretty violently. 
making her more difficult to hit. And also because I'm maneuvering, my own accuracy is going down. Nine hundred meters out. This is when the auto evasion systems kicks in. That's something that I would love a toggle button for. What the fuck was that? A toggle button that says I want auto evasion on or off. Because in this case, I want it off. I don't want these things to keep evading. I'm not looking for a ram. But if the ship is going to evade, I want to tell it which way to go. 54 down. <laughs> Six inches trying to pitch in, but doing a terrible job at it. I wonder if the torpedoes are ready. Starboard side. I'm assuming not. But here's to hoping. Chance to pen, still 53. Starting to take too much fire from these ships. I was hoping that I could quickly get rid of the Latona by flooding her out, but... Come on. 54%? The Emile Beton is starting to take a bit too much damage. Engine 3 is damaged. Let's turn out. Engine repaired. 43% chance to hit. Another 27 damage. Fuck this, we're firing HE. One good penetrating HE hit. And she's gonna light up like a Christmas tree. Or maybe like a bonfire in her case. Forty percent chance to hit, forty-five percent chance to hit, and we're not hitting shit. Steady course. Smoke it up. There. Fire set on the La Latona. Taking some hits. Nothing critical. Every system is still functional. Missed. Hello, Deli. You're also looking to get involved. Twenty-five percent chance to hit. Twenty-one. Their chance to hit's twenty-four. What sort of stereoscopic one rangefinder? I have a coincidence three, and my chance to hit is worse. What sort of bonuses do you have? Target fast speed. Okay. So that's a debuff. You're near the flagship. Okay, which ship is the flagship? Is that the Philomel? Because that flagship bonus, I could do without. Starboard torpedo launch. Target, Latona. Range, 1100 meters. Latona has immediately spotted the launch. But I'm not sure if she's going to be timely enough to do something about that. And if she is not, she's going to get hit. If the torpedoes run true, then maybe they can still hit the deli as well. So this torpedo launch can change everything. Latona detected torpedoes, deli has not. Can I get a double strike? I think we're gonna just clip the stern on the Latona. There you go. And land two on the new deli? No, is it really that? Yep, yep, she's gone. Nice. That was a perfect torpedo launch. Three torpedoes launched, three torpedoes hit on two different ships, no less. Let's see, are you still in your flagship? You're not? I'm looking at it from the perspective of the Latona at this point, and I'm not seeing the near flagship bonus anymore. Let's keep maneuvering, because the more I maneuver, the less I become predictable. There you can see, target maneuver, minus 30%. Let's turn back to the other side. 
Philomel still circling me, but not doing enough damage. I wonder if the port side torpedoes are ready to take on the Philomel again. She already dodged the whole salvo once. I wonder if she can do it again. New target, Philomel. Oh, you are near the flagship. Yeah, no, they still have the bonus. I must have overlooked it. They still have the bonus. Some damage against Philomel, but also the Emile de Bretagne is on fire again. Oh, shit! Flash fire. What did I lose? Please tell me he's going to just be one. Starboard turret's gone. Seven inch. Acquire target. Philomel. Port torpedo tube. Launchman ready. Enable. Range, 1,200 meters. Target appears to be in a steady course. Torpedoes away. Target, Philomel. Philomel's burning. Philomel detected the torpedoes. Hard not to, really. But much like her sister ships, I doubt that she's going to be able to do much about it. I'm going to already start making turns back to port side. So I can sink the Latona. Philomel's going to get hit at least twice and potentially even three times. Which will put her immediately out of the fight. One, two, three. I'm surprised that she hasn't been destroyed instantly, looking at how much of the ship's on fire. But I think the flooding will kill her. Next target, Latona. There goes the Philomel. This battle is going a lot smoother than I had expected. I thought that this was going to be a real struggle, actually. But so far, it's actually pretty smooth sailing. Now, had these ships had torpedo tubes much like mine, so a triple launcher or a couple of single launchers on the starboard and port side of the ship, this would have been a much more difficult fight. As it happens, this time around, I lucked out against the AI. Finally. Because with Taskmaster Tuesdays, recently I have not really been getting very lucky. Now, judging by the torpedoes, how many have I hit? I've hit 67%. Impressive. And the torpedo tubes have done 11,208 damage. The main guns, a mere 459. And the 6-inch guns, 46. So pretty much everything came out of the torpedoes. Which is exactly what I had in mind when I designed this ship. With the torpedoes on the port and starboard side. I wanted that damage. Oh, there goes the flooding again. I wonder if the starboard tubes are loaded yet. They are. Slow down and turn to starboard as quickly as you can before the Latona is able to get her stern torpedo away. If. One, two, three. Latona's dead. And the Marine Nationale wins the fight. Nice work. Nice work. So what happened here is that I had uh, I gained 80 points in total for sinking all the ships within an hour. So that is checked. I was doing, I think, 28 knots, which is another four points. Um, I had radio, which is, I think, six points. So I came to at least 90 points there. Nice work. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that battle. Uh, I wanted to do something else than the mostly 1940s gameplay. So in this case, I thought I'd design a light cruiser from 1912. Thank you for watching. And don't forget, if you want to send in your scenario, you can do so through the link down below in the description. And if you want to improve your chances of getting your feature or your scenario featured on the channel, become a naval architect through my Patreon program. Link down below for that as well in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon for another one.